Uh, my name is William Owen Cox. I live on Mount Joy Place, and I'm a graduate of New Rochelle High School. Uh, my father, Robert Cox, publisher of Talk of the Sound, asked me to read a few words on his behalf. For many years now, my father has tried to provide the citizens of New Rochelle with honest investigative reporting intended to raise awareness of the pattern of waste, fraud, and abuse displayed by this school system to the detriment and dismay of its hardworking taxpayers. He has published many stories and given many speeches and forums just like this one, hundreds of them. This is another such speech, so let me read what my dad has to say. After eight years during which a highly ineffective superintendent of schools presided over a period of organizational malaise and unprecedented financial corruption, almost by a miracle, in 2013, an educator of uncommon integrity, Jeffrey Korostov, was named interim superintendent. Initially, Dr. Korostov told me he was skeptical about the accuracy of my reporting. I challenged him to pick any construction project written about on my site, Talk of the Sound, hire an independent expert, and evaluate my reports. Michael Orofisi of Capital Project Consulting was hired to do just that. His analysis fully confirmed my reporting. He agreed that work paid for was either done poorly or not done at all, and that none of those six invoices, uh, totaling more than $300,000, should have been paid. Based on that report, Dr. Korosov commissioned Michael Orofisi to conduct a full-scale building condition survey in the spring of 2014, from that report, the board first learned about the dangerous condition of our schools and was told the price tag for urgently needed repairs in every building. The information in that report was then entered into software developed by Orofisi called CapProSoft to prioritize the work. $39.2 million in Priority 1 and Priority 2 repairs were listed, meaning repairs to what were determined to be immediate threats to the health and safety of students and staff in our schools. For the past 14 months, I have sought to obtain a copy of Orofisi's building condition survey under freedom of information requests and been thwarted at every turn. Last week, I filed an appeal with Dr. Osborne for withholding this record. Today, I received a response stating that the Orofisi report did not exist. This is patently absurd and entirely untrue. This Board of Education, the Superintendent's Cabinet, and General Counsel received and reviewed this document during a presentation made to them by Mr. Orofisi. I then foiled for emails and invoices from Orofisi in order to prove the report was commissioned, billed for, and paid uh, for by this district. Last night, I received a reply that it would take seven months to produce these records. By law, the district has 22 days. Every board member, with the exception, exception of Ms. Atala, was handed a copy of this report. Upon his arrival, Dr. Osborne received a copy when he was briefed on the condition of each of the schools. They all know that this report exists. In fact, the findings in this report were the final straw that led to the report, or led to the departure of John Quinn, John Gallagher, and the entire Aramark management team. This report is the basis for the CapProSoft data. Okay. Response. Uh, thank you very much. There's no question there, but I guess there is a uh, allegation here that there's a report that was not turned over uh, to a FOIL request that uh, allegedly you authored, Mr. Orofici. So maybe you could describe what reports you have generated and in addition, uh, you know, if, if you feel like saying uh, what happened around that time of July 1st, 2014 and what we've done since then, that might be helpful to be on the record there as well. Thank you. Uh, absolutely no problem, um, and I think it'll take me less than three minutes. Um, we were um, asked to take a look at the items that are were in the comments last year. We looked, we reported to the board, and corrective measures were taken with respects to how the how projects were released to various contractors in the district. That was done immediately after we discussed the items. I think that report uh, is available. Um, that indicates the projects that we looked at. Um, the report that he's talking about, which um, we also looked at our software, which we designed and had patented and used by about 700 school districts, is the CaproSoft uh, FAST Facilities Assessment Survey Tool. We were asked to walk through the buildings, we did. We entered our data into that, and that data was utilized as a basis for the building condition survey this year. Um, when we uh, when we went in, I, I think the report is available. I know I'm 
answering the question this way because I think it's been on online. So I am very confused by there was a question about that. Um, but the, the um, <clears throat> it's taking me more than three minutes. Um, the project costs that we identified were addressed by the school district when we presented them and they began an energy performance contract. And we talked about the methods and means to complete certain work in the summer of 2015 in full knowledge that a licensed architectural firm as a requirement of the state of New York and in full knowledge of the fact that you receive significant reimbursements from the state of New York for this report that's being prepared. The work was being completed by CSR this year which resulted in the documents that you have before you, which is the report that we had and is in the software and the, and the comprehensive work that needs to be completed. I don't remember the amount. I think the young gentleman said 30 something million. Yeah, that was the number that we indicated and now you're looking at a number that, that included soft costs, so you take your 20% off of it. So now in this review, which is a comprehensive review of every square foot of the building, of the buildings throughout the district, indicates that you, you need to do this work. It's not a surprise. And the, the work was, was produced last year, and we did the energy performance work. We got ahead of the game, and now this work is completed, and it's time to address it. It's very simple. So just to, just to clarify and make sure that I'm hearing you right, there were basically uh, two documents. One was a review that you did uh, around May 2014 uh, that reviewed six projects that were, you were asked to review, uh, and that has been uh, you know, released. Then there was another one where you took the, uh, your survey of the buildings and some of the pre previous annual visual inspections, and you loaded it into Cap Pro Soft, and that basically generated a project list, and that's what you shared with uh, the Board of Education, the incoming superintendent. That's also been released and, in fact, is posted in various places online. And there isn't any other document, if I'm wanting to hear you correct. And that also that the projects that you recommended be done were done basically as fast as they could have been given that school was in session through the vehicle of the energy performance contract and the emergency projects that we did that summer when we first met, as well as the increase in operating uh, costs that we allocated for capital projects. And that brings us to this bond. Am I, am I summarizing what you said pretty uh, accurately? Yeah, I, I, I'm absolutely certain that those are the only two reports that were issued. And the, the, the theme of both reports were identified by you. And the work that was required to be completed uh, was in those reports, but we identified what we needed to do as soon as possible. And that work was the, the work that was in the energy performance contract. It didn't change the series of events that brought us to a building condition survey. And the building con condition survey, which is not, you have not submitted it to the state yet. It's not completely formalized into the report. But because these projects were listed last year and this year, the board is addressing them now because we have an opportunity to do this work next summer and get ahead of it. Thanks very much. That should pretty fully satisfy that line of inquiry. Okay. Next, Robert Cox. Okay, so we are actually going to reopen this line of inquiry. Uh, so there is a report, despite the statements that were made earlier. I'm surprised at the statements that Mr. Orofisi made just now, but unfortunately they're on videotape. Um, so why are they so determined to prevent the public from seeing the report that they would violate New York State law by withholding it, going so far as to claim the report does not exist? The Orofisi report details unsafe conditions in every school, but one of the highest priori priority items was the roof at Webster School which had been leaking for years. They were warned that Webster School was unsafe, its inhabitants were in harm's way, and we all know what happened, the ceiling collapsed and the school was closed. What they have not told you or shown you is that an estimated four tons of plaster fell intact and pancaked down onto the classroom. Had class been in session, every child and adult in the room would have been crushed to death. 
the death toll would have exceeded Sandy Hook. In short, the new superintendent rolled the dice and came up short, and they don't want you to know that. Orifici and the entire administrative team advising Dr. Osborne told him in the summer of 2014 that he needed to move immediately to bond for $40 million to begin urgent repair work as fast as possible because the schools were unsafe and someone could get hurt. He rejected that advice, and over the next year, the boilers at Albert had failed, and ceilings collapsed at Webster and what few know at Barnard as well. There is no doubt that our schools are falling apart, that tens of millions are needed to fix them. But until Dr. Osborne and this board come clean, release the Orifici report in its entirety and acknowledge that they played a game of Russian roulette with our children, I cannot support giving the same people who already blew so much money to get us into this mess tens of millions more. I would implore all of the stakeholders in this school system to insist that the entire Orifici report without redactions be published on the district website immediately, and I would ask Dr. Osborne to repeat to the public the reason why he told his team in 2014 he was not going to schedule a bond vote during the 2014-15 school year. Now, I got a couple of seconds, so I just want to address something. Mr. Orifici said that uh, with the CAP uh, ProSoft software, that you went around the building and you entered the information into the software. And then a moment later, you said the information was entered from the AVI report. So I just want to be clear that whether or not Mr. Orifici is actually saying that he or his company are the ones who entered the information into the CAP Pro soft software. So I'd like to ask that question. Which company? My company? Yeah. We entered the information the AVI reports were there. We looked at it, we walked the schools, we updated the, the reports, and those reports were represented at $39 million. That was clearly okay. stated by you, by your people here this evening. My son. And there's no denying that. That's okay, there. I just want to be clear because see, what you're saying is, is that you didn't send the report that I'm asking for, which I still don't have, to BOCES to have them enter the data in your software. Okay. Where well, you okay. you can answer that question, right? I can answer that. Yeah, sure. Okay. If please you like. Do. I don't, I don't yeah, want to interrupt, please. Please, please do, Mr. Okay, your three minutes came to an end, and so now, Mr. Orifici, you can respond, please. Our firm, we have another, our, our associated sister firm is Capital Project Software. It works through BOCES, so districts can receive BOCES reimbursement for the work performed. Our people are BOCES employees at that time, worked for the district and entered the data through BOCES contract. It was my staff working under a BOCES contract so the district could save money by entering the data and having an updated report. Okay, thank you. 